Hi, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. In the last video, we discussed the theory, mechanism and synthetic applications of Birch reduction reaction. Click on the i button on top right of this video to watch it. I have given the links for the other related topics in the description below this video. Watch them. In this lesson, we shall learn the theory, mechanism and synthetic applications of Wolf-Kishner reduction reaction. Similar to the Clemenson reduction, as discussed in the previous lesson, Wolf-Kishner reduction also reduces the carbonyl group of a compound to the methylene group. The only difference is that Wolf-Kishner reduction is conducted under basic conditions whereas the Clemenson reduction involves acidic conditions. Thus, the Wolf-Kishner reduction is a reaction to convert carbonyl groups of aldehydes and ketones into methylene group. During the reaction, an aldehyde or ketone can react with hydrazine to give a hydrozone. The hydrozone can be converted to a hydrocarbon by loss of nitrogen upon heating in the presence of a base. Ethylene glycol, diethylene glycol or another high boiling solvent is used to facilitate the high temperature ranging from 140 to 200 degrees centigrade needed in the second step. This deoxygenation method is called the Wolf-Kishner reduction reaction after the names of the scientists Ludwig Wolf and Nikolai Kishner. For example, propiophenone first reacts with hydrazine to form a hydrozone derivative. This hydrozone is then treated with a base known as potassium hydroxide at a temperature 175 degrees centigrade in the presence of diethylene glycol forms N-propyl benzene a yield of about 82%. In the second example, the cyclohexanone is converted to cyclohexane under similar conditions but in the presence of a dimethyl sulfoxide solvent. The yield is about 80%. In the third example, the benzophenone can be reduced to phenylmethane by Wolf-Kishner reduction. Note that the intermediate hydrozone derivative has not been shown in the reaction. All the reactions proceed via a hydrozone intermediate that is not isolated during the reaction. Further, the Wolf-Kishner method reduces all ketone carbonyl groups, not just those adjacent to benzene rings. Also note that the compounds that cannot survive treatment with hot acid can be deoxygenated using the Wolf-Kishner reduction. As discussed, the aldehydes and ketones can be conveniently reduced to hydrocarbons by this method. The classical procedure for the Wolf-Kishner reduction that is the decomposition of the hydrozone in an autoclave at 200 degrees centigrade has been replaced almost completely by the modified procedure after Huang Minlan. The isolation of the intermediate is not necessary with this variant. Instead, the aldehyde or ketone is heated with excess hydrazine hydrate in diethylene glycol as a solvent and in the presence of alkali hydroxide such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide for several hours under reflux. The water formed eliminates and the temperature rises to 200 degrees centigrade when the hydrozone decomposes with the formation of hydrocarbon with the evolution of nitrogen. In a further and in newer modification known as a Cram, Sahium and Knox method, the reduction can be carried out at room temperature by using potassium tertiary butoxide as a base and dimethyl sulfoxide as a solvent. The yield is excellent in this reaction. For example, benzophenone gives about 90% of diphenylmethane. Unlike Clemenson reduction, the Wolf-Kishner reduction reaction does not fall with acid-sensitive or high molecular weight substances. When cyclic anhydride are used in the reaction, the Friedel-Crafts acylation provides a new ring to an aromatic compound. The same results can be achieved using the Wolf-Kishner reduction. Note that only the ketone is reduced and the carboxylic acid is unaffected. This is quite similar to that of Clemenson reduction reaction. Mechanism of Wolf-Kishner reaction The ketone first reacts with hydrazine to form a hydrozone. Hydroxide ion removes a proton from the amino group of the hydrozone. The reaction requires heat because this proton is only weakly acidic. 
the negative charge can be delocalized onto carbon which removes a proton from water molecule the last two steps are repeated to form the deoxygenated product and nitrogen gas applications of wolf kishner reduction reaction wolf kishner reduction reaction has been frequently used for the reduction of carbonyl groups to methylene groups in various types of synthesis the method unlike to clemenson reduction is applicable for the reduction of high molecular weight and acid sensitive compounds yields are often below 70% due to various side reactions such as elimination or isomerization reactions number 1 reduction of high molecular weight compounds high molecular weight compound for example 24 keto cholesterol has been successfully reduced to cholesterol by this reduction reaction number 2 reduction of camphor to camphene camphor a terpene which possesses the carbonyl group is converted to methylene group in camphene number 3 introduction of long straight chain alkyl groups in aromatic compounds In the Friedel Crafts alkylation a straight chain alkyl group longer than ethyl group cannot be introduced to an aromatic ring because of rearrangement of the alkyl group however this has been achieved by acylation followed by wolf kishner reduction reaction number 4 in the structure determination of estrone the formation of 7 methoxy 12 cyclopentenophenanthrene a compound of known structure by the reduction of estrone methyl ether followed by dehydrogenation with selenium indicates the carbon skeleton of estrone as also the position of the methoxy group number 5 in the synthesis of alcohols from amines Under Wolf Kishner conditions a primary amine can be converted to an alcohol. Number 6 synthesis of aspidose permidine. Ishibashi and co-workers employed the Huang Minlan modification of the Wolf Kishner reduction as one of the final steps in the synthesis of a racemic mixture of aspidose permidine. Distillable material was removed after hydrozone formation at 160 degrees centigrade and then heated to 210 degrees centigrade overnight. The carbonyl group that was reduced in the Wolf Kishner reduction was essential for preceding steps in the synthesis. the tertiary amide was stable to the reaction conditions and reduced subsequently by lithium aluminum hydride number 7 synthesis of cridinol amides are usually not suitable substrates for the wolf kishner reduction as demonstrated by the example above koye and co-workers found that a twisted amide can be efficiently reduced under wolf kishner conditions the authors explained this observation with the stereoelectronic bias of the substrate which prevents anti brett immunium ion formation and therefore favors ejection of alcohol and hydrozone formation the amide functionality in this strained substrate can be considered as isolated amine and ketone functionalities as resonance stabilization is prevented due to torsional restrictions the product was obtained in 68% overall yield in a two step procedure number 8 synthesis of imidazole derivatives The Wolf Kishner reduction has also been used on kilogram scale for the synthesis of a functionalized imidazole substrate. Several alternative reduction methods were investigated but all the tested conditions remained unsuccessful. Safety concerns for a large scale Wolf Kishner reduction were addressed and a highly optimized procedure afforded to product in good yield. And number 9 synthesis of antascomycin B Macintosh et al used an allylic diazine rearrangement in their synthesis of the C21 to C34 fragment of antascomycin B the hydrozone was reduced selectively with catechol borane and excess reducing agent decomposed with sodium thiosulfate the crude reaction product was then treated with sodium acetate and heated under reflux in chloroform to give the 14 syn isomer This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That is all in this video the Wolf Kishner reduction reaction. In the next lesson we will discuss the open or oxidation reaction. Till then never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.